Pastor Paul, and again I say to you, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome back. I hope you are ready to get back into God's Word. We ended on last week in the Gospel of Mark chapter 11, and I want you to go back there, Mark chapter 11, and we're looking at verses 20 through 24, and we're talking about have faith in God. I hope that's where your faith is, have faith in God. And let's now begin with prayer, because we need the Word of God to bless us, and we need God to sign off on what we're trying to do on today. Let's pray. Father, we bless you again, and we thank you for your word. Your word has been so rich in our lives and so powerful in our lives. Thank you on this series of lessons on faith and what and to look within ourselves to see if our faith is in you. Bless our time together, we pray. Bless each person who listens and those who have ears to hear that they will receive that which will bless them and cause them to grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' holy name, we ask it all. Amen. We ended last week in uh, Mark chapter 11, talking about Jesus after he cursed this fig tree. Uh, he spoke to this big fig tree because it did not bear fruit, and it dried up. And he began to share with his disciples that they must have faith in God. And he speaks to us today that we too must have faith in God, not in ourselves, not in our accomplishments, not in the things that will pass away. Our faith should not be in gold and silver. Our faith should be in the Lord, our God. So we ended last week uh, we got the points one and two uh, in Luke chapter, I mean, in Mark chapter 11. Uh, number one, we said, uh, don't doubt in your heart, Mark 11, 23. And then we talked about believe what you say, Mark 11, 23, that B clause says that. And so I'm going to pick up here and read Mark 11, uh, begin in that verse 22 down to verse 24. So Jesus answered and said to them, the disciples, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Let's pick up where we left off on last week. Uh, believe what you say. And I did say this, that there is power in your words. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. If you say you can't, you won't. If you say you never will, it won't happen. You need to understand that. But when you walk by faith and not by sight, you will see how God moves within your life. You will accomplish dreams that you thought were uh, unable, you were unable to accomplish. You will go to heights that you thought you would never reach. But when your faith is in God and you believe what you say, it will happen. Listen, uh, maybe when Jesus talks about speak to your mountains, he's talking about speak to your troubles, speak to your bad situations, speak to those things that are not going well in your life to get out of your way. God never told us to climb any mountains. That was a great song in the 80s. 
Uh, Lord, give me strength to climb the mountain. God, we told that song said, don't move the mountains, but give me the strength to climb. God didn't say climb mountains. The Lord says, speak to the mountain. And when you speak to your mountain, you must believe what you've said. Get out of my way. Move. Be cast into the sea. Go into the abyss. Get out of my life. I believe that God has a blessing with my name on it. And that's what happens when we put our faith in God. So believe, number one, don't doubt in your heart. Number two, believe what you say. But I want to look at number three. When you pray, you need to pray with expectancy. In other words, when you pray, you must believe by faith that your prayer request will be heard and answered. Pray with expectancy. So many believers pray out of habit, and I don't believe they really think that their prayers will be answered. But the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. And you need to understand that when you pray, you must believe that God will answer your prayer. Let's look at verse 24. Therefore, Jesus is speaking, I say to you, whatever, say that to yourself, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe, underline that word believe, believe that you receive them. Believe that you will receive them. You shall receive them. Whatever things you ask when you pray, you must pray with expectancy. Believe that you receive them. And then he says, Jesus says, and then, and, and you will have them. So why aren't your prayers being answered? Why are you not receiving the things that you've asked the Lord for? Well, look, let's go back to verse 24 whatever things you ask when you pray. So when you ask, whatever that may be, whatever you need, are you asking in faith and are you believing that God will give you or grant to you your partition? That's the difference in whether or not our prayers are answered. And listen, when you pray, uh, I'm not saying God's going to answer you right away or answer you in your favor. Sometimes when God answers us, he answers us one of three ways, yes, no, and wait. And I say this to you all the time, yes, no, and wait. There are some seasons in our lives that God would allow us to go through, but I do know his word says in due season, when is your time, in due season, you will reap if you faint not. So when you pray, pray believing, pray believing, whatever you've asked God for, you will have it. You will have them. Maybe you need more than one thing. Maybe you need God right now. God, I, you're in a desperate place. Your prayer is, Lord, I'm praying, calling on your name. And I'm believing with all my heart that you will give me what I need. That's faith. That's faith. That's fully allowing possibilities to happen in your life because you're open to the move of God. And that's what God wants us to be. He wants us to open our spirits, our hearts, our minds to him and how he desires to move within our lives. Listen, faith, faith should be the lifestyle of every Christian throughout the Bible. Throughout the Bible. You can read it from Genesis to Revelation. No one was ever used of God in a mighty way without faith. You need faith to, to, to move. You need faith to be blessed. Listen, uh, no one was ever delivered in the Bible without faith. I think about uh, the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. When, when King Nebuchadnezzar threw them in the fiery furnace for not bowing down to him, his statue, uh, they said, listen, uh, we don't have to answer you in this matter, O king, because the God that we serve, he's able to deliver us. Now, he may not, but we believe that he is able. You have to believe, listen, 
I'm praying for deliverance. I'm praying for healing. I'm praying for financial blessing. I'm praying for God to work a miracle in the life of my family, my kids, my grandkids. I believe by faith and I pray expecting God to answer me because I believe. And so no one in the Bible is ever saved without faith. The Bible says by faith, by grace are you saved through faith. By grace are you saved through faith. You have to believe in God. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. You have to believe. We must have faith to live. You need faith if you're going to live. You, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. You have to have faith to walk. We walk by faith and not by sight. You must have faith when you pray. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. So you need faith in every area of your life. So stop blaming God because you've missed your blessing. Stop blaming God when your prayer or prayers go unanswered. You need faith. Really, you need to take what I call a faith test. See if there's any doubt in your heart. That's the first step. And then see if there's any unbelief in your heart. And then see if your prayers are not prayers of expectancy. That's the key. But we must have faith in God. Such a strong faith. And I mentioned on the last time we met uh, how we should have a great faith. So much so that our faith can literally move mountains. So let's review the last two weeks. Number one, don't doubt in your heart. Mark eleven twenty three 23, A clause. Number two, believe what you say. Mark eleven twenty three 23, B clause. And then number four, I only mean number three, pray with expectancy, Mark 11, 24. And I'm going to tell you something. When you put all these pieces together, when you uh, take and have a self-evaluation to see where you are, and if you change the way you think and your, your life begins to focus on faith in God, not in yourself, faith in God, not in what you do for a living, faith in God, not in your friends or family, faith in God, you will see a shift in your life. You will see how God begins to work miracles in your life. You will see how God begins to answer prayers in your life because of your faith is not in man, but it's in the Lord, our God. That's our time for today. God bless you, and I pray that your faith increases and that you begin to walk in the blessings and in the promises of the Lord, our God. See you next time for our morning manna.